about a minute or two anyway, so that's okay. It'll give everyone time to jump in and catch me. So you should be able to see me either on Facebook or you will be watching me on YouTube. I decided to get rid of the Twitter. I didn't, it wasn't, it wasn't happening. I haven't been on Twitter for ever, if ever I started on Twitter. Hello, Tanya. And uh, so I gave, I switched off the Twitter, so now it's just YouTube and Facebook. I think that's where everybody hangs out, who's in the crafting scenes. So, um, and I've decided that I'm not going to switch my iPad around and lean forward so that you cop a face full of me. I'll do that when I'm switching my camera around. So tonight we are going to be playing with a... Uh, uh, well, it's not a newish technique. I think everybody's jumped on board and have, has done the, um, has done the, I think, there we go. Hey, Rosie. I think everyone's pretty well tried the alcohol uh, blends marker technique. I did a video on it some time ago. Hey, Amanda. But this time I'm doing it with a little bit of a twist. So um, same, everything's basically the same. I'm just using different materials. Hi, Lois. Good to see you all. This is great. Okay, so now that we've got a few coming in, and I don't know, and I, I probably the YouTubers will come in after. Uh, what the time in SA is still seven thirty. <laughs> so um, now I know daylight savings is always. I mean, look how light it is out there. It's like I've you know, got my blinds open still, and it's light out there. I don't know that I like daylight savings to show you the truth. So, you know, because Queensland, Karen, from who's watching on YouTube, you know, once sometimes they're half an hour behind us and sometimes they're half an hour ahead of us. So it's crazy. But I really wish that we didn't have daylight saving. So Brookhampton, Wisconsin in the US must be nice and early for you. Um, well, we're an uh, hour and a half ahead now. Oh, where are you, Megan? Is that WA? I think so. Hour and a half. Yeah, because then sometimes it's two and a half hours, isn't it? So, yeah, all different. Leanne from Canberra. Kerry? Okay, fantastic. Right, okay, I'm going to... Um, but mind you, if you're watching the replay, just skip ahead from all of this stuff. So, um, you know, sometimes it's nice to chat when you're live. Um, half an hour. Oh, Queensland. Yes, half an hour. Not an hour and a half. Yep. Cool. 7 p.m. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, because you're behind us now. I know it's confusing because uh, uh, Northern Territory don't do um, daylight saving either. So it's all, we're all all over the place. Oh, I'm just getting my cards organised. Okay. I don't love it because it's dark in the morning and I can't wake up properly. <laughs> and then when daylight savings comes to an end, it's really, really, really super dark. And if you're over on the east, uh, the west coast a little bit more going towards Sejuna, the kids are getting on the bus and it's still dark when they're going to school. So it's crazy. But And I wish that if... Um, like, I like getting up early when the sun, I don't mind it when the sun wakes me up in the morning, but, you know, the dark mornings are a pain in the neck. So, I suppose they do only last a little while. The days are getting longer, it is coming up to summer. Okay, so I'm doing a, a quick plug for myself. I have got my sweet little stockings class that is ending tomorrow. Tomorrow is the last day that you can sign up for it. So I've got my six different cards in the class. So I will go through each of them because I think they're pretty cute. And the colouring's not too bad. So don't be afraid of colouring. Okay. And don't be afraid of dogs in there either because you don't have to put them in there if you don't want them in there. And you don't have to have a dog there either. You could just cut out one of the um, uh, stockings. So this closes tomorrow. Now there are three options available. So if you don't have the bundle... Um, you can purchase option one, which has got the bundle, uh, you get the matte dots in there and you get a quarter of a pack of the designer series paper. So that's the full one plus the kit, the kit and the instructions. Um, 
and option two is if you already have the bundle so um and you know demonstrators i i welcome you as well if you want to come and join in the fun you can do that um so you'll just get the matte dots the the um designer series paper you get a quarter of a pack and the card kit and the instructions and then because i had so many people from overseas who wanted to who kept every time i released a class they'd be like can i have just the instructions you can now purchase just the instructions as well so three different options but that is closing tomorrow and i really love those cards so i hope you join in okay was there something else that i tell you oh creative carnival so if you have registered for creative carnival whoop whoop starts tomorrow night we have a kickoff i've got lots of things planned and then of course all day saturday um and then if the, so Creative Carnival is um, a retreat for Australian demonstrators and thank you Tanya. So for Australian demonstrators, I know that some of you guys are already registered and ready to go for a fun weekend of crafting. The next one that Pam and I will be running will be held in February, we're pretty sure. And uh, But registration and information will be out um, end of November. Um, December for that so if you want to know more about the retreat that we run for demonstrators oh yes good work Amanda um, then um, come ch check us out make sure that you're on my newsletter or you you know making sure that you're getting Facebook feed and all that sort of stuff so um, it's going to be super fun tomorrow night we're doing some mystery stamping and uh, and then Saturday we're on zoom for most of the day crafting live together so that's good good okay we are going to be creating this card here tonight so um i expect to see lots of recreations of the background so let's see look at that there's a little bit of something else going on there now i am going to change the color of the cards um suzanne who i hope will be catching in and watching us um watching me live she might catch up on I might share this to the team group she might watch that later she suggested that I do um, like a mauvey color for her dress just to stand her out a little bit from the background so I'm going to pick the fresh freesia to color in her dress so anyway let's get swung around and um, we can get stuck into that I just got to shift some stuff on my desk as always because then I got to bring everything closer to me radio Oh, I hope he's doing better, Kerry. Um, it's not good, is it? It's not good. Okay, let me... Hang on, i got to find where my camera is. Where's my camera? There we go. Let me bring everything closer. And swing around. And do that. There we go. Awesome. And now I can actually touch on my iPad here and get that swung around properly. Isn't that better than leaning forward into the iPad screen? Radio. Okay, now I should be able to see comments now. Yep. Okay, I think everything's seized up for me. There we go. Now I am good. I think I'm good. Radio, get my glasses out of the way. Now we are playing with the Angels of Peace stamp set, which I loved the moment I saw it and um, and it's only $37 so I think that's pretty good sometimes there's some nice standalones that we like to um, to purchase we do have to hand cut though Ooh. okay so hi Karen coming in oh and you all have to oh broken ribs oh ouch well pass on our love to him now you all have to notice my fingernails too because normally I don't have this colour of fingernail and it's freaking me out. <laughs> okay, so let's get the sleeves rolled up and uh, let's get started. I really wish that my setup here didn't cast a shadow on my work area. But it is what it is. Okay, first things first. You know when you get a new stamp set and... Um, it's a photopolymer one. I don't have one that I haven't got uninked. Anyway, you know how they all come now on the sleeves? Yeah, I know, you gotta get them out of the way. You gotta get those sleeves out of the way. You, All your stamps come on these plastic sheets now, don't they? 
and uh, well, I peel all of mine off and stick them straight into the. Have I got one here? I stick them straight into into here. Oh, I didn't stick this one in very well, though, did I? <laughs> Holidays. So I peel off that, and I thought, you know, I'm going to I'm going to go around and around in circles trying to find just stick it. That's probably why it didn't stick very well. There we go. So I've decided that from all my photopolymer stamp sets, I would save all of the window sheets, the acetate, because I figured that they would come in handy one day. So I've got all of them. And they are a little bit grubby. So I don't know whether you can see that. I've got two. I don't know whether you can see, but you can see the outline of where the stamps have been. I don't know whether you can see that or not it's probably not catching it very well but anyway they they are quite grubby but if you get out your isopropyl alcohol and spritz it and then just you know clean it with a a cloth they come up nice and clean and ready to go again there's a might be a few little scratches on there but i can work with that that's no worries at all so you'll need a sheet of acetate and you'll need your isopropyl alcohol and this one is the diggers one and it is it does say on here somewhere but this one is a hundred percent alcohol okay I I have tried it with lesser alcohol and it doesn't work so that's why I'm saying this one and also a paintbrush Okay, so the technique is pretty much the same as um, working on vellum. So we're just going to, when I do the vellum ones, I like to work in little spaces, but I'm actually going to lay this whole piece down. And I'm just going to do one colour. I'm not going to do multi-colours for this one. So anyway, and work on the side so that your brush doesn't get all okay and then I'm just going to get high on the alcohol fumes because <laughs> I've closed my door in here now there's a couple of different ways that can do you can do this to give some different results you can actually flick your al isopropyl alcohol on that and that I sort of did it both ways because I don't like the scribbling in the background. So you can do that first, which is what I did. And if you let it dry a little bit, um, these little harsh line areas stay. And then all you do is like before, is just pounce, pounce your paintbrush over. And I do use a fair bit. And it's pretty quick. But you'll notice that these these bigger ones will stay so you can get quite a cool look go around the edges because we don't want those scribbly edges whoopsie actually it doesn't smell too like i'm not getting too many fumes And that is how easy it is. So you can go up and around those areas if you want. So there we have it. So this one's going to look a, a little bit, oh, of course, every time you do it, it's going to look different, isn't it? So just give that a little bit of time to dry. And voila, that's how easy it is. And if you just let that sit, these areas here will just dry as is and um, become really nice and dark. Like you can see it all gloopy up here, sort of just sitting on the acetate. But it dries, and I think it actually dries pretty quick. And I don't even need to use my snot sucker to blow things around. I think you probably could if you wanted to, but um, there you go. You can still if you want, but you don't really need to. Because I think that gives such a nice um, background on its own. 
Um, oh, I'm not getting comments. I'm still not getting. Sorry, guys. I've just. Oh, now I've got them. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, yuck. The eye is the best part. Of course it is. That's why we love um, stays on and markers. Do they smell? Oh, they smell too. Not as not as much as what some of the other ones that we've had smell. All right. So you can use your snot sucker if you want if you want to push things around. But I'm just going to let that dry. See, and when you pick it up, it's of course a lot thinner. Very cool. So you can see through it a bit more. Okay, while that is sitting aside, I'm just going to put it over there. Well, I am going to grab my... So you get a technique and a colouring lesson all in one go today. All right. And what have I forgotten? I have forgotten my ink pad. There we go. Alright, so Memento is the one that we need. So we'll stamp her down. Okay, so we're gonna color, I'll just put that on the side. We're gonna color her in. Um, with Fresh Freesia, Daffodil Delight for her hair, Ivory with just a touch of Calypso Coral Light for her skin, and then I've got some grey for um, the bird, the dove, and a little bit in her wing, and then I've got some Wink of Stella as well. So let me see whether I can just push in a little bit. I'm just going to see whether I can zoom in. I'm sure that there was a way to zoom in. Oh, there it is. Zoom. Just remind me to zoom back out when the time comes because I always forget that. Now, I'm going to start with her skin today, tonight, I think. And I do usually do quite a few layers now this little bit here I sort of always find think that these are like tendrils that come down and that her neck is showing through but I'm just so I'll show you what I did on this one I always think that where are we there we go I always think that this area is skin with just tendrils coming down but I might leave that little bit there this time and color that in with her skin just to see whether which way looks better whoops let me just move down a smidge closer to me there we go okay so I usually lay down a little bit of color first and then around her hairline I come in darker just same with still with the ivory under her neck I just do with the ivory and then a little bit around there just to try and get a little bit of difference a little bit of shading and oops I think that was the tail of the bird but that's okay we will we will come back and paint it grey afterwards. And then you can even come back a third time if you really want to, just to get a little bit more. Now, I like to give her a little bit of blush and I like the Calypso Light. So just really lightly on, like on her cheekbone area. And then I just come in and just blot around just to soften that up a little bit. And that, as that sets in and the alcohol dries, it'll just sort of make it look like she's got a rosy cheek instead. Okay, we'll do her hair in the daffodil light and dark. So I'm not going crazy with heaps of different um, blends colours. Now, if you're chatting, I'm concentrating, so apologies. I keep missing them. they don't stay, stay up on the screen all right so just put in a little bit of dark i'm not actually being too particular and then just going over the top that probably looks a bit better than the way i was doing it a 
Here we go. I think that does look a, a, a lot better than the way that I have been doing it in the past. Making it look like she's got more hair. <laughs> okay, and then if you want, you can come back with your dark and just add a bit more. I've got no idea. I don't know how to do hair. But we'll just we'll just put down colour. <laughs> hey Glenda. Just throw down the colour is what I say. Alrighty. So next we will do her dress. And again, I'm really I don't do fabric either. So we'll just ad lib. Actually, I'm gonna do start off with a bullet tip around her bodice <clears throat> and I'm using the dark so I'm just gonna put a little bit of color down under her buoy and then I'm gonna switch to the other end the brush end because I want these to be a little bit thicker and which way will I go what way did I go here so just going to add some colour. Again, I sort of just throw these colours down. Now this one I want to be quite wide. Um, on this side, on this side. I have no idea what I'm doing. But it doesn't matter. Hello, Joanna. Here we go. I don't think you need to be professional when you're doing these things, do you? All right, so I'm going to use my bullet tip again for the top. And just, I think the key with these is just to go over the colour that you've already put down and then just colour in. So over the whole top, I think it just sort of helps blend any of those lines out. And then I can switch and do my light. And it's really quick and really fast. <clears throat> This is lazy colouring in. <laughs> and her dress sort of fizzles out there. Now, I think the other key thing to do is to go over that again. So coming in with my dark again and perhaps just going only in some of the areas, not all of them, just to add a little bit of and I'm going to stay with my bullet because I don't want such a thick line this time. For my dark, that is. So. Thank you. I'm still not so good with my talking and colouring at the same time, but I'm getting there. So where have I done and where haven't I done? And then back with the light. Because I find that you can even just layer up two colours. Like you don't need, I mean, I, you know, sometimes I go gung-ho and I'll use four colours of purple. But I'm finding that these build and layer really quite nicely and you don't actually need to have all the colours. So again, I will go in with my dark and I mean it is a fair bit of backwards and throwings, but um, I don't mind. And I think the more the more layers that you put down, because your paper is a little bit saturated anyway. I mean, you can see I'm not even being neat, but because the paper is saturated, then the colours of layers just soak in, 
and they blend on their own. So I'm not even going to go back in with my light again after that. So that is going to be done for me. Okay, so now I'm going to come in with the light smoky uh, slate blends. And I'm just going to try and fix up that tail that I coloured in the wrong colour. And I'm just going to pop a little bit of grey under his bird. Hey, Suzanne! Uh, this is just a basic white, just plain, not, not the thick. Um, I, I find I did like colouring in the thick one. Oh, excuse me, when we had the whisper white. But I'm sort of finding that, oh, I just had my arm in my technique piece. That's clever. Um, I'm finding that if I use the thick star, the thick white, it um, it does actually bleed a little bit. So yeah, normally I don't have an issue with bleeding. Okay, so with my grey, yeah, I think she's going to look really nice, Suzanne, over the top of the blue. Um, I, I did do a blue background, but um, I think her this one and this one's fresh freesia, so good choice. So I'm just going to come in and just do a little arch with the with the grey on that side and on that side and I'm not actually going to put a lot of colour down at all and then I'm just going to come under these areas just really lightly and just a little swoosh up here maybe a little bit behind her there and a little bit behind there I'm not I'm not really going to put a whole lot down for the wings at all. And then I'm going to grab my Wink of Stella and I'm just going to go over her wings. Ooh. Whoops. Oh, it goobied everywhere. Did you see that? Now I've got a big dark area. Oh, hopefully it'll dry very shiny in that spot I don't like it when it goes on too thick because then it sort of covers the stamped image I just like it subtle never mind maybe I'll do the dove too this time there we go so that's her now apologies I do need to cut her out so I will zoom back I will pull back and let's cut her out. Thankfully, she doesn't take too long. Chuck that on the floor. Yes, putting the, put, I mean, I, I've put that much shimmer on it now that you can hardly even see the grey. But um, taking the colour out with, um, oh, I was going to come in way too close. I can't talk and cut at the same time. I was almost going to come into the line. Okay, what did I do last time? Did I go? I think I went up into her wings. She's pretty. I think that's why I liked her. She was just a nice, oops, oops, oops. She was just a nice shaped figure with her beautiful flowing dress. And I actually really like the sayings, the sentiments in this stamp set. There's some that, um, you know, you don't have to use for Christmas. Like sometimes angels are just good people with kind hearts. So, you know, you could use that as a thank you. Okay. So who loves fussy cutting? I do when I've got a good sharp pair of scissors. These ones are starting to, I don't know whether I've got them mixed up with the, my older sets or not, but I think I need to lash out on a new pair or get these ones sharpened or something. And I need new glasses. But we have spec savers coming soon. So I would be able to go there. Depends on, yeah, I think it depends on my mood. Like I'm trying to go quick, but I'm also don't want to go quick because I want to do a good job. 
I don't like fussy cutting on camera. <laughs> because I'm not close to my body when I'm cutting, if you know what I mean. All right, that's not too bad. Okay, I need a sentiment now. So I am just going to use, where is it? This one, piece on earth. Cool, now, dilemma time. Do I, she's gonna look, she's gonna look nice, I hope. Do I stamp my sentiment in dark blue, which is what I did last time, or do I stamp it in a darker purple? Daring me. Decisions, decisions, decisions. I think I will stick with blue to tie it in to my card base, I think. So I'm just going to ink it up. go nice and deep so this is misty moonlight that i'm using did i tell you that i use misty moonlight for my background technique i can't remember i cannot remember put you on the side all right close your eyes oops and i'm just gonna get the peace on earth bit i'm not actually going to um I'm not going to use the whole sentiment. I just want a nice skinny sentiment. So trim that bit off. And then try and get this bit straight because it is super skinny. There we go. Okay, so I've got all my bits. Now, I think my card base is still the super long card base, so I'm just going to trim this down to my size card base. And, oh, I might be able to put some purple rhinestones on here instead of um, just the normal ones this time. So I'm cutting my card base down to 26 centimetres. So 10.5 by... 26 and then scored at 13. Now I won't put that too far away because I'll need it again soon. Right there. Okay, now I am going to trim down my piece here. So I'm using, I've used, um, right, let me just go back to hang on a minute let me pull this out of the way so you can see what's going on i'm hoping that you can see that see how it's got the funny texture on the front i don't know whether that's catching or not um it sort of looks grayish in some areas it's sort of like and when you feel it it's it's not rough but it just feels like i don't know there's something on there if you know what i mean I don't know whether that makes sense or not. So anyway, so I'm going to place that this side down. And it probably did, yeah, it did leave a little bit of a mark. So if you place it that side down, oh, look, my card's all shimmery. Oh, you know what? That's probably because of the Winker Stella on my fingers. Oh, um, I'm going to place it down that way so that it's sort of like shiny on the outside as well. So that way, if there is anything on the card, uh, on the acetate, it won't actually get onto anybody's fingers. So I'm going to trim this down and I do want it the full size of my card front, but I'm going to trim it so it's like a millimetre shorter than what I actually need it to be, just so that it doesn't get... Um, uh, just so that I can stick it down easily, basically, so that I don't have to try and line it up super carefully okay and then it needs to be 13 centimeters and this is longer so I will probably I will cut whoops, a fair bit of that off you can if you don't want the harsh edge along the top of your um, background then trim it down to size first and just work within your area 
So for this one I'm just going to come a couple of mils shorter than 13 and trim that. Okay, so now it just fits on top and I won't have to worry about any overhang or anything like that. So again, if you want, if you don't like the harsh edge, just stay within that area, like trim it, trim it first. Okay, I'm just going to lay that on there. I'm not actually going to stick it on just yet because we want to put our, should I go that way or should I go this way? I think you probably see a little bit more of the patterns going that way, don't you? Um, anyway, so I'm going to stick her down first. I'm going to use dimensionals for her. Well, that'll give me time whether you guys think that way or the other way. Well, I'm sticking plenty of dimensionals on her. And don't look at how many I put on. <laughs> And I think I want to put a mini one near her hand. Mm. Don't look. Close your eyes. <laughs> okay. Oh, which way? Which way did I did I miss any comments? I've missed some comments. Bother. I have to stand up. Uh, yeah, divert your gaze now. Yay. Okay. Oh, now they're coming up. Oh, why does it do that? Okay, I'm thinking that way. I sort of, I wanted the background to be like, um, you know, as if she was up in the sky and, you know, the night sky behind her was all, you know, you know what I mean. So anyway, so pop that down roughly where you want it and then we'll pop her to the second way yep good i left it that way i think and then i'm going to turn that over i've got so much wink of stella on my fingers okay put a couple of little dimensionals little buddy ones and then i can put my seal on that end And pop that on here okay and then I can just pop that oops I can just pop that up there because it fits nicely into her dress there yeah I like the purple okay so now I'm going to turn that over and I'm going I'm actually going to use the stamp and seal plus and I'm just gonna put just go lightly and I'm just going to put the adhesive where did that go all the way no it didn't now it did I'm just going to put it where I can see where her dress is and I think I can put a little bit just go easy with this dude lightly is the key and that's all I'm going to put on. So I'm just going to put on. So what if you're doing this and you're sticking something over the top, make sure it's a decent sized image that's going on over the top. And then with these, because I've trimmed it down, I should be able to stick that on without having to try and line up too much. And there we go. It should be stuck quite nicely. And the other great thing about, I'm looking for the lid. It's already on there. The other great thing about working on the acetate is it's not going to curl. Like I, I don't have a lot of curling issues when I work with the vellum, but I know that some people do. But when, you, when you're working on the acetate, you will not get any curling whatsoever. So I do have to play with multiple colours though, so that will be fun. All right, I'm just grabbing out my little packets here. And I'm pretty sure that I've got purple ones left. Oh, I should leave that out so I can put them away. I'm pretty sure I've got some purple ones. Yep. And we can use up some of these guys instead. Thanks, Lois. Thank you, Glenda. All right. So, and these will tie in beautifully with her dress as well. So I'm going to use a big one. 
and then a small one I did try and debate putting some around here but she's too close to the edge and that just doesn't work so um, we're just going to pop them around the sentiment instead so I know I always forget to use you know the colored well you can see which ones I do use the most so I'm going to have to get out some pale papaya and uh, play with that color as well soon I think so there we go I think she looks pretty darn cool so it's such a pretty background and and it's glossy as well so it just gives you know something different hang on a minute I've lost a diamond I've lost a rhinestone where have you gone come back gone gone for good come back I've lost it <laughs> it's disappeared under there oh hang on I might be able to come back to you that might be one thing with the uh, acetate you might have to stick them on a little bit better than slippery gotcha you need my, my something a little bit stronger there we go found it <laughs> sorry about that so there we go and I and also you know instead of putting it on the I just thought it would be really nice um, to have it on a blue base rather than a white base but of course it's going to be different every time you play with it so um, and you know try it with two colors or three colors so have a real good play so I am probably going to do more now that I've got all those I knew that I'd kept those background those the window sheets from the polymer stamp sets for a good reason so I thought one day they'll come in handy for something and uh, they certainly did so thank you very much for joining me just want the one card tonight um, I think mainly because we had the technique and we had the coloring in as well so so two lessons in one there you go um, okay so we will hopefully see you again next week um, all going well my son has his peas so he can drive himself to work now I feel like I'm just free again like the first couple of times he drove off out in the driveway was a little bit freaky but I'm, I'm over that now <laughs> so definitely Suzanne um, definitely so good choice um, yeah and for those who are in the creative carnival we will see you tomorrow night so woohoo! I'm looking forward to it so don't forget to bring all your supplies for our mystery stamping night tomorrow night if you are in creative carnival if you're not in creative carnival you need to be there next time so because it's awesome okay thank you very much oh and don't forget my the card class don't forget to that so if you're thinking about that go and check it out all the details are on my blog and um, you can go and have a look a bit more about the info on there as well okay thank you very much and uh, we will see you next week thanks so much for joining me